Hey, Donna Schwartz here. Sorry I'm a little late. I ran into the typical LA traffic. So I hope you're having a great day, great day today. It's Friday, August 5th. Holy cow. In this Facebook Live session, I wanted to talk about the importance of warming up. And uh, just a quick plug, I'm helping Nick Manila um, promote his new book called Comprehensive Saxophone Warm-Ups. It's a great book. You should definitely check it out. I'll put the link below um, so that you can definitely check out this book and get a really good um, comprehensive saxophone warm-up. And it, this is also great for band directors who want to teach their students how to warm up properly. Nick goes a lot into the importance of sound and what makes up a good sound. So definitely check that out. So, on to things. I'm Donna Schwartz from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. I'm a musician, educator, speaker. I live currently in Los Angeles. I used to live in New York for a long, long time. You can check out all my stuff on my website, DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. I have a bunch of Facebook Live videos up as well. You can check them up on my page right here at Donna Schwartz Music on Facebook or on YouTube too. I have a lot of videos up on YouTube. So today, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about warming up. I got, had a bunch of questions and a bunch of observations uh, with regard to how people warm up. I've noticed, especially with the young students, they'll, uh, they'll put their instrument together and then just blow into some kind of crazy lick or something like that. And I'm, oh, I'm warmed up. <laughs> uh, no, you're not. Here's the thing. What's the purpose of a warm up? Is it to make the instrument warmed up? Well, yeah, in certain respect, if you're in a cold climate, you do need to get air into the instrument. You got to get it warmed up. Um, the other purpose of a warm up is to get your fingers going, get your fingers loose, right? To get your air going. If you're a wind player, you got to get the, the breathing going. But the other important point about warming up is getting your mind going. You got to warm up your brain. Now, you may think, oh, well, okay, you know, I'm just, you know, it's in the morning, I'm woken up, all that kind of stuff. I'm warmed up. No, you've got to get your brain thinking in terms of getting ready, getting prepared to make music that day. Now, uh, for some folks, they like to meditate. I think it's an awesome idea. In fact, I really strongly encourage you to do that. I tend to do it at night before I go to bed. A lot of people do it in the morning to start their day. Meditation is great for clearing your mind. It's also great for getting you focused. I also want to talk about focus a little bit later too. Hey, Carlos. Um, thanks for the link, by the way. Uh, anyway, so with, with warming up, you want to warm up a whole bunch of things. Now, what some people don't address with warming up, they think, okay, warming up is just all about the horn. I talked about breathing. Well, really what's important for wind players, we've got to get the air going. I don't know about you, but some days my breathing is really, you know, it's great, it's efficient. Other days, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> so the thing, the thing that you want to think about, even before you put your mouthpiece together, put, put your horn together, get your air going. And all you really need to do is stand up with really good posture, make sure your shoulders are back, make sure that you could stand against the wall. Okay, I've spoken about this in the past. Stand against the wall, your heels are against the wall, your butt is against the wall, your shoulder blades are against the wall, and the back of your head's against the wall. Good posture. Close your eyes, just calm your brain, calm your mind for a second, and then do what I call the one finger exercise. And I learned this from Vince Panzarella. You do this a couple of times. You just stick your finger in front of your face, touching, and you inhale air past your finger. Um, if you wanna use a metronome, you can. I've got one here. So let's say I set this at 60. I could breathe in on one and blow out for two. The point for this, actually let me do it first and then I'll explain a little bit more. The point behind, behind this, you wanna get that low in, inhalation sound. You want to fill totally up, which means you're filling up, you can say your stomach area, your abdomen area, whatever you want to call it. You want to fill up your bottom, but you also want to fill all the way up to your collarbone. Yes, because your lungs go all the way up there. So when you're breathing in, fill up everything. And then when you're blowing out, I'm just going to use a toe syllable. So I'm breathing in on an O syllable, blowing out on a toe, just to get the air flowing. Now, um, 
this Vince Panzarella was a phenomenal trumpet player, New York Philharmonic. This was used to help me to get my breathing going, but also to get it relaxed. Super important. If you're finding that um, when you breathe on your instrument that you're tense, your shoulders are up, and you're getting a, a very high sounding inhalation, you're, you're putting tension in your body. And tension anywhere in your body is going to come out everywhere in your body. So for example, if you, for just right now, make a fist. Now, where do you feel the tension? Is it just in your hand? Uh-uh-uh, it's not. I'm feeling it in my elbow. I'm feeling it in my um, whatever biceps and triceps I have left. <laughs> I'm feeling it in my shoulder. I'm feeling it actually down my back. And believe it or not, my legs are just, have just tensed up too. I'm going to shake that out. So if you breathe tense, I'm like tense all over. And tension's going to come out. Now, particularly for wind players, and this goes, I mean, string players, you don't have to worry about breathing per se, but... Um, particularly for wind players, if you take a tense breath, your fingers feel tight too. You don't want that. And even if you're playing trumpet, three valves, it doesn't matter. You don't want tension in your fingers. You need, everything needs to be relaxed so that you can function and be efficient in your playing. So um, I'm focusing on warming up, but I'm really hitting the nail on the head when it comes to dealing with breathing and warming up your breathing. So this one finger exercise I find is really important. Now you don't have to do this with a metronome. You don't have to put it at 60. You know, you, you don't have to follow exactly what I'm saying. I'm just giving you some suggestions because everybody's different. <clears throat> but here's, here's the thing. Uh, one idea that you can do, again, you can put the metronome at 60, breathe in on one, blow out on three. Breathe in on one, blow out on three. You're taking into account filling up totally all the way up to your collarbone and then when you blow it out like a tube of toothpaste how you're supposed to use a tube of toothpaste if you even know what a tube of toothpaste is you're supposed to squeeze from the bottom I don't do it I know I should but you're supposed to squeeze from the bottom so when you exhale think the same concept so I breathe in I fill all the way up from the bottom up and when I blow out I exhale from the bottom up I tell a lot of my students to do that, especially my younger students, um, before they have to study for a test. Now, this is a little noisy. Uh, not before they study, before they take a test, excuse me. This is a little noisy, so they can kind of do it a little quieter. But what this exercise does, it calms your brain down, it gets your breathing going, it relaxes you. But especially for the young kids when they're taking tests, it tends to calm them down, and it really helps out a lot. So, um, again... A, an important part of your warming up is the breathing. If you're not breathing well, you're not going to get a great sound, as Nick Manella talks in his comprehensive saxophone warm-ups book. Okay, so add that component to the mix so that you'll have a really good warm-up. Now, a lot of people say, "Well, what's the secret warm-up that Gerald Albright uses or Mindy Abair uses?" I don't know. Everybody's different in terms of their warming up. But here's the thing: if you're if you're just starting out, you're going to be warming up differently than someone like Gerald Albright, who's been playing for a long time and who's a phenomenal player. He's got different needs for warming up. If you're just starting out on trumpet, you're going to warm up a lot differently than Tom Hooten from the LA Philharmonic, who's got a lot more playing demands than you do. So you have to keep that in mind. So if you're just starting out, a warm-up should, should include a breathing exercise or two, should include a posture check, it should include, um, I would say, playing on the mouthpiece, playing on the mouthpiece neck or barrel if it's a clarinet, uh, mouthpiece for brass instruments. Uh, for the flute, it would be the head joint. You should be doing a few minutes on that. Again, getting the air flowing, making sure that your embouchure is set, okay? So for, especially for bra uh, brass players. Um, from one day to the next, you know, it can go get a little wacky. And the thing with brass playing, we have to spend a little bit more time warming up because this is what the vibration here in the air, the, the combination and coordination of the two are making the sound. So brass players are going to need to warm up longer than wind players, other woodwind players. 
So you want to make sure that you've got things going there. And a lot of mouthpiece playing is really super important. Some brass players would recommend buzzing on your lips. Um, I do that on occasion. I used to do it more often. I don't do it as much. Some people are dead set against that. Whatever works for you. Okay, but for beginners, you should be doing some kind of mouthpiece work, mouthpiece neck work for a couple of minutes. And then you're assembling your instrument. And you could either do long tones with a metronome. Um, or you can do interval exercises or play a nice ballad, okay, a really nice song that's very lyrical. It's a great way to warm up. For more, uh, for people that have been playing a little while, um, you know, a few years and such, maybe playing out a couple of gigs here and there, you're going to be doing those, some of those same exercises, but you're going to be adding more because the thing is this, I like to divide my practicing into tone, technique, and music. And for me, the warming up is part of the tone sequence there. Now, I recommend if you're only able to practice 30 minutes a day, you spend 10 minutes on each thing, tone, technique, and music. Professionals are not going to just warm up or not going to just practice a half an hour a day. They're going to do a whole bunch of series of half an hour throughout the day, up to two, three hours. Um, so they're going to be warming up for tone purposes. They're also going to be warming up their fingers. So they're going to be playing certain scale exercises with metronome um, to warm up their fingers. So it's going to be more involved. But for beginners, we're really trying to get the sound going here and trying to get a nice, full, efficient sound. And again, the way to do that, start with your breathing, um, check your posture, do your mouthpiece, mouthpiece neck exercises, and then do a bunch of long tones. Um, you don't have to spend... Here's a mistake I made growing up as a brass player. I would spend a boatload of time on warming up type of activities. Now, I was a great reader. Um, which was cool. And I would basically, you know, in school, I had no problem reading the, the band music. And I would spend a lot of time working on solos and, and such. I was more classically trained. Um, but I spent too much time with tone types of things. And the problem is that that can get boring really quick unless you're really dedicated. But also, it doesn't leave time for the fun stuff. And the fun stuff is really an important component in your practicing. If you don't have the time for the fun stuff, it's your practicing is not going to be as fun. So you want to give yourself that dessert, right? That fun stuff, which means working on, you know, playing tunes and, and doing all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this little discussion that we've had <laughs> about warming up will help you to focus yours. Um, again, everybody's different. So after, you know, the beginning stages, you may find that what helps you to warm up better is to maybe do a little bit of things on the mouthpiece after you've done breathing exercises and just playing a ballad. And then that gets you going. That's cool. Okay, whatever works for you. But I find, especially with the young kids, you know, just putting the stuff together, putting the horn together and just blowing through your favorite lick and then playing the loudest, highest note you possibly can. That's not effective. Don't do it. All right, you, you're, you may not feel it during that practice session. You're going to feel it the next day, especially if you're a brass player, okay? Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to talk about, well, the Olympics are here. Woohoo! I love the Olympics. What does that have to do with music? A lot. If you examine the great players, the great musicians, but also the great, um, the great players in sports, okay? I'm a huge, huge soccer fan. Uh, soccer fan, and I love the U.S. women's soccer team. And for a very long time, since around 2003, when she came onto the national team, Carly Lloyd has been my favorite player. She's been the person that's been hidden under the radar, and now all of a sudden, especially last year, it's like boom, there she is. Okay, in the limelight because she's she's just that good. Well, the thing is this: what makes a really good uh, athlete musician is focus. I recently wrote a blog article about this, change your focus, improve your performance. It's very true. If you really want to be a great player, a great musician, um, if you really want to achieve a certain goal, whether it be learning you know, a Charlie Parker tune or learning the Haydn trumpet concerto or the Hummel trumpet concerto or just improvising over a blues or learning this bebop, this sick bebop lick, you got to focus. And while the Olympics are going on, pick a sport, any sport, but watch how the best athletes approach their sport. 
They're focused. They're determined. They know the outcome that they want to reach. That's the thing. A lot of people, um, they think, oh, I'll just meditate. I'll, I'll, I'll wish for this thing to happen. It'll come true. That's an important part of it. Um, but you need, you need to do the work beforehand. And the only way that that work beforehand is going to help is if you set good goals and know, know what you want to achieve, know the res end result of what you're looking for in terms of uh, the goal that you want to reach. Hey Lou. Um, so watch the Olympics, watch them for fun, but also watch them with a purpose. Watch the Olympics and watch the best athletes and see how the best ones compare to the athletes that are really good, but not may not be at the top tier. You're going to notice something. You're going to notice a, a determination, a focus that's just top notch. And then for musicians, look at the top musicians that you like, that are, you know, you follow for your instrument area. Um, check out their focus. Check out the determination. Okay? Their mind's not wandering when they're on the bandstand. They're into it. They're engaged. They're having a conversation. All right? And that's really key. And if you want to be up to that level, that's the thing that you need to shoot for. Okay? So today, I just wanted to hit on those two topics of warming up. You know, it's very important. People think, ah, you know, warming up, it's just to get the instrument warm. No, it's to get you warmed up here, here, and here. And people tend to neglect this part. They also tend to neglect the breathing part as well. And I also want to talk about focus because the Olympics are here, my favorite time. So definitely check out the Olympics for focus and determination and definitely start looking at your warm-up routine. Check out if you're a saxophone player, check out Nick Manella's comprehensive saxophone warm-ups. I'm going to put a link underneath this. Um, I am helping him sell it. So, you know, if you purchase it from my link, that's going to help me out. I'd greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Um, check out my website also. Um, I have a link to, to Nick's book there as well. But I also have a lot of great videos there to help you improve your playing, uh, whether it's on saxophone, trumpet, or other wind instruments. There's also a lot of blog articles on there that will also help teachers to teach their students as well. So, uh, oh, by the way, too, if you sign up for my website, you'll get weekly tips every Tuesday, weekly practice tips that will help you to improve your tone, your performance, your mental state when you're performing, performance anxiety, all those types of things. And I also share things that I don't share on Facebook and other social media. So check it out, donnaschwartzmusic.com. Sign up. Okay, so you can get those weekly newsletters with those weekly practice tips. And there's a couple of other freebies, too, that you'll get as well. So thanks for joining me today and have a great weekend. Watch the Olympics. Take care. See you soon.